With the Valar came other spirits, whose being also began before the world, of the same order as the Valar, but of less degree. These are the Maiar, the people of the Valar, and their servants and helpers. Their number is not known to the elves, and few have names in any of the tongues of the children of Iluvatar, for though it is otherwise in Aman, in Middle-earth, the Maiar have seldom appeared in form, visible, to elves and men. Why aren't the Ainur equally powerful? This is a question I have been directly asked more than once through comments and other videos, and I think it highlights the confusing nature of the races outside those arguably more recognisable or even relatable, men, elves and dwarves. One comment asked, if Sauron, Saruman and Gandalf are all of the same order, why do they differ so greatly in terms of so-called power? This video will answer these questions and show that the Ainur could not be created equal, with creativity and greatness being born of disparity and even inequality, the Ainur merely being the same as the other races in that regard, on a divine scale. Many reading this question are perhaps confused about why it would be asked in the first place. If Aragorn, Grima Wormtongue and Barlam and Butterbur are all men, why aren't they equally powerful? If Glorfindel, Haldir and Arwen are all elves, why aren't they equally great? We could repeat this exercise for all races and peoples. Why would they be equal? I think the question has been asked due to the apparent confusion that arises from the creation of the Ainur. So let's explore the nature and purpose of that race. In the beginning, Eru Iluvatar made the Ainur of his thought, the Holy Ones, with him before aught else was made. The greatest of these spirits when they descended into creation after the music of the Ainur were known as the Valar, the powers of Arda. With the Valar came other spirits of the same order, but of less degree. These are the spirits known as the Maiar, the people of the Valar, their servants and helpers. Both belong to the race of the Ainur. We are merely making a distinction based on their inherent greatness. The Valar and the Maiar belong to the order of the Ainur. The great among these spirits, the elves name the Valar, the powers of Arda, and men have often called them gods. The lords of the Valar are seven, and the Valier, the queens of the Valar, are seven also. These were their names in the elvish tongue as it was spoken in Valinor, though they have other names in the speech of the elves in Middle-earth, and their names among men are manifold. The names of the lords in due order are Manwe, Ulmo, Aule, Orme, Mandos, Lorien, and Tulkas. And the names of the queens are Varda, Yavanna, Niena, Esther, Vaira, Vanna, and Nessa. Melkor is counted no longer among the Valar and his name is not spoken upon earth. This immediately tells us that despite all of these spirits being of the thought of the Allfather, they were not equal. Each had a role they would assume, a part to play in the music of the Ainur, the music leading to the creation of the material universe. At first, each voice sang alone, or a few together, while the rest hearkened. Each spirit comprehended only that part of the mind of Eru whence it came. Slowly, there was an understanding of their brethren. A deeper understanding was achieved through harmony and performance in unison. Again, this is telling us that the Ainur were not clones of each other or all equal parts of the mind of the one himself. Each had a role to play, gifts to share with others all working together to create a greater theme than any could produce on their own. 
Then Iluvatar said to them, Of the theme that I have declared to you, I will now that ye make in harmony, together, a great music. And since I have kindled you with the flame imperishable, ye shall show forth your powers in adorning this theme, each with his own thoughts and devices, if he will. But I will sit and hearken, and be glad that through you great beauty has been wakened into song. If all spirits were equal in their spirit, will or power, then there's no disparity, and Eru might as well have not bothered creating them in the first place, performing the music on his own. With this inequality, it allows each spirit to have some weakness in some area that would be greatly complemented by another spirit. A great example of this would be the Elder King himself, Manwe, the Lord of the Breath of Arda. He is as great as the titles that go before him, first of all kings, Lord of Arda, and ruler of all that dwells within. He delights in winds and the clouds. With him is Varda, Lady of the Stars. She knows all regions of air. We know they are strong as individuals, but let's read what Tolkien tells us of their strength when together. When Manwe there ascends his throne and looks forth, if Varda is beside him, he sees further than all other eyes, through mist and through darkness, and over the leagues of the sea. And if Manwe is with her, Varda hears more clearly than all other ears the sound of voices that cry from east to west, from the hills and the valleys, and from the dark places that Melkor has made upon earth. Both the Elder King and his Queen are even greater through the harmony of their union with one another, and this hints towards the purpose of the Einar in general, and we can look towards the relationship between Melkor and Manwe for that. Tolkien spells out the need for Melkor to be made far more powerful in original nature than anyone else. Eru himself even declared to the Einar that Melkor was the mightiest of their order, and he was still the mightiest of them when he descended into the world itself. This is because Melkor was supposed to make, devise and begin. Manwe, who was considered a little less great, though still incomprehensibly great to us, was to be the one who would improve, carry out and complete the works of Melkor. Both were to work together to accomplish greatness. Melkor couldn't do everything on his own, and was never meant to. Neither was Manwe, or any other of their order. When it comes to the Maiar, the idea remains the same. Their number was unknown to elves, but we know that they were servants and helpers of the Valar. Their own nature and gifts would draw them to work with those spirits they could naturally complement. They weren't assigned a position. They would naturally become the people of those spirits greater than them. Yet despite Melkor's greatness, he still relied on a spirit that was certainly not as great as him when it came to an attempt to hold dominion over an aspect of Arda he could never subdue, the waters of Arda. Melkor hated the sea, for he could not subdue it. It is said that in the making of Arda, he endeavoured to draw Ossa to his allegiance promising to him all the realm and power of Ulmo, if he would serve him. So it was that long ago there arose great tumults in the sea that wrought ruin to the lands. But Uinen, at the prayer of Aule, restrained Ossa and brought him before Ulmo, and he was pardoned and returned to his allegiance, to which he has remained faithful. This highlights exactly what I am talking about. Melkor and Ossa were not equal in authority or inherent power, but the latter still held gifts that Melkor did not, even if the former shared in the gifts of all. My analogy in the past for explaining this is to imagine an orchestra. Melkor is proficient in every single instrument of that orchestra, but he cannot play a symphony alone. A spirit like Ossa can only play one instrument, 
but he is more than proficient in that one instrument. He is arguably a virtuoso. Melkor should conduct and work with an entire orchestra of virtuosos, but doesn't. Apply that to all of these spirits, some great in one area, others greater in other areas, but all complementing each other if they play the music together. The question was directly asked of me in relation to Saruman, Sauron and Gandalf. I think I don't need to go into any detail about Gandalf and Saruman being of the flesh when they arrive in Middle-earth, which would cause a distinction to be made if we are comparing this order. Even when dwelling in the Blessed Realm, they wouldn't have been equal. Saruman was of Aule's people, and Gandalf was not associated with him, but other Valar, and he would hold gifts that Saruman or even Sauron didn't. Even if we assume Sauron was one of these spirits Tolkien said were nigh as great as the Valar, he can't achieve everything Gandalf could, and vice versa. This is why Tolkien tells us, in the music of the Einar, that the Valar drew unto them many companions, some less, some well nigh as great as themselves. Disparity is what leads to imagination and creativity. Uniformity would lead to the great music at the beginning of time being a very boring and uneventful act of creation. The differences between these spirits, accomplishing what none could have achieved on their own, no matter their talent as individuals. <laughs>